Hello, and welcome to the Nutrition Diva podcast. I'm Monica Reinagel, your host, and our topic this week is mindful eating and some of the ways that we can get it wrong. Think about a book that meant a lot to you in your life. Maybe it inspired you to think about something important in a new way or helped you to find your passion. Stories are powerful because they change our view of the world and influence who we become. In the new podcast, But that's another story. Author Will Schwalbe talks to influential people about the books that changed their lives. From a journalist who was moved to think about race differently to an artist who found her passion through another artist's work, every episode tells the story of someone whose life changed when they picked up a book. Find But That's Another Story wherever you listen to podcasts. Mindful eating is super trendy these days. It's supposedly linked to all kinds of benefits, everything from healthier eating habits to weight loss to better digestion. But many of the people I work with say that they try mindful eating but find it irritating, unpleasant, boring, or weirdly stressful. Just like meditating and gratitude journaling and a daily yoga practice, mindful eating is supposed to make us healthier, happier, and more relaxed. But instead, we often end up feeling stressed and guilty about not doing it. If you hate eating mindfully, you might be approaching it wrong. And here are a few ways that we often misunderstand what mindful eating is really about. First, we mistakenly think that eating mindfully means that we should eat only in order to satisfy our physical hunger and for no other reason. Now, being aware of our hunger and satiety signals is definitely a big part of eating more mindfully. Taking a moment to assess whether or not we are hungry, or still hungry, can help us recognize when that urge to eat, or to continue eating, is due to something else, such as boredom, fatigue, or sadness. And this, in turn, gives us the opportunity to think about whether eating is really the best way to respond to those feelings, or whether there might be another response that would serve us better. On the other hand, sometimes the urge to eat is not about escaping from unpleasant feelings, but rather about being attracted to pleasurable experiences. Even if we're not hungry or sad or bored, and something delicious crosses our path, we have a strong desire to enjoy it. And this is not inherently bad or wrong. And eating mindfully doesn't mean that we never get to eat something simply because we enjoy it. Mindful eating simply means being more aware of our thoughts, feelings, and sensations, and what is driving them, so that we can make more conscious choices. For example, if we recognize that our urge to eat is driven more by a desire to enjoy a particular food than by actual hunger, we might decide to go ahead and enjoy that food anyway, but in a more moderate quantity. Researchers who study mindful eating report that when you consciously choose to allow yourself a treat, as opposed to that eat first and ask questions later approach, you experience more pleasure and, equally important, less remorse from your indulgence. Eating mindfully shouldn't take the pleasure out of eating. If anything, it should make eating more pleasurable. Mindful eating involves bringing more attention to the rich sensory experience of eating, the colors, shapes, textures, flavors, and aromas of food. This can heighten our appreciation of the food that we eat and make that experience more satisfying and more memorable. But when we eat more mindfully, we are also more likely to notice when foods are not particularly enjoyable, or perhaps when our enjoyment of them has begun to ebb. Once you begin to practice mindful eating, you're much more likely to stop eating a food that you're not particularly enjoying rather than just polishing it off simply because it's sitting in front of you. The end result may be that you take in fewer calories, but it will definitely mean that you get more satisfaction for the calories that you do take in. Before I explore another mindful eating misconception, let me take a moment to thank our sponsor. Most skincare products require you to make a choice. Some of the more effective products are also loaded with harmful chemicals, but the products with cleaner ingredients might not do that much for your skin. But True Botanicals believes that you shouldn't have to choose. 
True Botanicals uses leading research from top universities to formulate luxurious formulas that are as potent as they are pure. And third-party clinical trials show that True Botanicals really work. Their Renew collection for aging skin outperformed competing brand Creme de la Mer, and their Clear collection for acne outperformed Proactive Plus. True Botanicals isn't just as effective as conventional skincare, it's actually better. And True Botanicals is the first company to have its entire skincare line certified safe for people and the planet by the nonprofit Made Safe, America's first non toxic seal. Go to TrueBotanicals.com now and they will send you some free samples. Plus, you receive $20 off orders of $40 or more with the code DIVA. This offer is restricted to first purchase only. Another mindful eating mistake is to confuse awareness with judgment. Having certain thoughts, feelings, or desires relating to food doesn't mean that you're a good or bad person, and nor does it mean that you have to respond to those thoughts, feelings, or desires in a certain way. With mindful eating, we strive to be more aware of our thoughts and feelings and sensations without judging them. If you can approach the process of mindful eating with as much curiosity and as little judgment as possible, it will help you make the best use of the information that you gather. And finally, eating mindfully doesn't necessarily mean that you have to sit in a dark, quiet room all by yourself and shut out all distractions. There's an important difference between mindless or distracted eating and making a conscious choice to enjoy another activity, such as reading or conversation, while you are eating. When we sit in front of the television or the computer with an open bag of chips, we can easily just go on autopilot. Our mind is completely absorbed in whatever we're doing. Meanwhile, our hand keeps moving from bag to mouth, bag to mouth, until the bag is empty. Whoops, where did all those chips go? Did we enjoy them? Were they stale? Who knows? That sort of mindless eating can lead you to consume hundreds of excess calories without even noticing, much less enjoying them. And I talk more about this in my episode on the dangers of unplanned eating. We're also less likely to remember food that we eat while we're on autopilot, and this can lead us to eat more at the next meal. Interestingly, how well we remember our last meal can play a role in how hungry we feel at the next one. Now, this doesn't mean that you can never do anything else while you're eating except stare at your plate and deeply contemplate each bite of food to the exclusion of all else. But if you do choose to read or chat or watch a screen while you're eating, be aware of the increased danger of losing track of what or how much you're eating. And here are some steps you can take to avoid overeating. First, take a truly undistracted moment to decide how much you want or need to eat. And if that amount is less than what's immediately in front of you, put the remainder out of reach. Then, Focus your attention on your first bite or two of food. This is when your enjoyment of that food is likely to be the most intense, so why not get the most out of it? But it also gives you a chance to reevaluate whether it's actually worth finishing. If it isn't, put whatever you don't intend to eat out of reach before turning your attention to your book or to your companion. If you like to read while you eat, and many of us find this pleasant and sometimes necessary, Try alternating back and forth between the two activities. Enjoy a few bites of your meal, then put your fork down and pick up your book. Read for a few minutes, then put your book down and enjoy a few more bites of food. Likewise, if you're having lunch or dinner with a friend, try putting your fork down every once in a while and just enjoy the conversation for a few minutes before continuing to eat. Every time you resume eating, you also have a fresh opportunity to notice your hunger level and your level of enjoyment. And you might find that just checking in throughout the meal leads you to eat a little bit less, but to enjoy it a little bit more. As we approach National Mindfulness Day, which is on September 12th, I hope I've at least convinced you to give mindful eating a try, or maybe another try. And for more strategies on how to translate the benefits of mindful eating into real-world living, you can check out my episode, Four Tips for More Mindful Eating. 
You'll find that and lots of other related episodes on our website at nutritiondiva.quickanddirtytips.com. And you'll find me at nutritionovereasy.com or on Facebook and Twitter, where I'm at Nutrition Diva. Thanks for listening and have a great week.